What's the best way to compare the performance of different trading strategies? This is a question that many academics have grappled with and many solutions have been thought up by great minds throughout trading and investment history. For an individual trader like you or me who's looking to compare the performance of their own systems or compare the parameter values in an optimization, the task is relatively simple providing you follow certain guidelines, which I cover in detail in some of my other episodes. But the problem becomes a little more difficult when you attempt to compare many trading strategies that are very diverse in nature. So comparing strategies between different traders with completely different approaches to trading. And for all of the strategies on the Darwin X platform, of course, this is the case. So how do you compare systems in a like for like way when they all operate under very different risk levels? How do you compare a system that trades a buy and hold strategy four times a year with one that trades 50 positions every day? Laid on top of these are factors and considerations such as asset classes that are being traded, different utilization of leverage and margin, and you can see that the task becomes increasingly more difficult. The Darwin X Performance Investable Attribute addresses these challenges and compares many diverse trading strategies in a like-for-like -like way by taking a rather unique approach. Stay tuned. The Darwin X Performance Investable Attribute attempts to provide a valid and fair comparison of different trading strategies, regardless of the characteristics of those strategies. Let's take a look. Let's start by looking at a strategy that performs very well for performance. And in this particular case, you can see that it scores 9.7 out of 10. Now, you can either click here to go directly to the performance attribute. Alternatively, you can click on the investable attributes tab and you then have access to all of the attributes along here. And you can access this by clicking on PF. One of the biggest problems when comparing different strategies is that those taking a higher risk can appear to perform much better, at least until they go into a significant drawdown. So the first thing that the performance investable attribute does is calculate what the risk adjusted performance of each strategy would have been using a standardized risk. It effectively normalizes each strategy to facilitate that like-for-like like comparison. And the risk level that is chosen is that of a 6.5% value at risk or VAR. So all of the data that you see displayed on the performance metric here is based on that 6.5% VAR. The next problem that the performance metric sets out to overcome is that of each trading decision made by the trader playing an equal part in the eventual result. You see, there are some circumstances where if a trader is not consistent with their position sizing strategy, and therefore the leverage of each position is very different, this can result in some strategies appearing to perform well, but just by pure luck that the heavily leveraged positions happen to produce a profit while other trading decisions that used a much lower leverage and resulted in losing positions effectively get swept under the carpet. And this can give a very misleading impression to anyone observing just the equity curve. And this is a major shortcoming of the majority of trade copying services that you find on the internet. So because of the underlying algorithm used for this metric, it means that it gives a much more realistic measure of the performance without that element of luck deceiving observers of the strategy. So after this process of risk adjustment, 
and then also considering each and every trading decision with an equal weighting, regardless of the leverage used, we're then ready to calculate the value of the performance metric. So let's look at how this is done. Behind the scenes, the effectiveness of each trading decision is assessed by playing it off against what completely random decisions would have resulted in. And it looks at how the trader's decision beat or otherwise random behavior. In fact, the actual strategy gets compared with 10,000 random decision-based strategies and looks at what they would achieve over the same period. The performance of those random strategies are then ranked alongside the actual strategy. And that's what we're looking at here. So you can see on this flyover window that it's split up into percentiles. The way you need to visualize this is that all of those 10,000 plus the actual strategy are lined up in order with the best outcome at the top and the worst outcome at the bottom. And of course, the actual strategy will appear somewhere in that list. Now, if we go to the right hand side of this chart, we can look at where this strategy appears right now. And on this second metric, on the flyover window, we can see that it appears in the 93 percentile. And what this means is that 7% of the random strategies performed better than this strategy. But of course, 93% performed worse. And what that tells us is that the decisions that this trader is making result in a system that is far better than random chance. Now, importantly, each of these 10,000 random simulations are all trading on the same basis as the actual strategy, using the same risk and so on. And so if you think about it, what this metric is determining is the value that the trader's decisions is making in real terms, above and beyond random chance, to result in the eventual performance of this strategy. Now, as I said before, this is looking at a strategy that does perform well for this metric, and it appears in a very high percentile in that ranking. Let's now take a look at an alternative strategy. And here, for example, you can see that this one fits into the 8.78 percentile. Let's just think about what this means approximately 91% of those random based strategies performed better than this trader strategy. So that's 9,100 of them were better, where just 900 were worse. And so the bottom line here is that this trader's decision making is worse than random. And so when assessing the performance of a strategy, it's always a good idea to look at both the equity curve and the performance metric side by side. And if the equity curve looks reasonably good compared to the performance metric, it means it's probably had luck on its side in that the highly leveraged positions happen to produce profitable trades, whereas those lower leverage positions resulted in losses. And it's that fact that is giving the illusion from the equity curve that it is a good system. The performance investable attribute is just one more of those measures that DarwinX takes to ensure that investors and traders get a true picture of the strategies that are hosted on the platform. And this means that people can make informed decisions. And this is one of the areas that sets DarwinX apart from many of the trade copying websites, where the results that you see might not always be giving you the information you think they are. But by learning to interpret the DarwinX investable attributes, that will give you the fullest picture possible in order to help you make those decisions. Now, one thing that all traders have to be aware of is the extent of the capacity of their trading strategy. And by that, I mean the ability for it to cater with large amounts of investment without it adversely affecting the performance for investors. 
And once again, Darwin X has another investable attribute that provides this valuable information, the capacity investable attribute. But more on that next time. In the meantime, you can take a look at that investable attribute for yourself by following the link here to the Darwin X platform and clicking on the icon with the CP label. But now, until next time, trade safe.